So today I'm having an operation, which is not our usual content. I'm in a bit of an unlucky club that I've uh, had a number of operations in my life. I had quite a few when I was a child, and uh, so I'm kind of used to it. If you're wondering why I'm here in the hospital, I'm having a hernia operation, and I think reaching the age of 35 and having to have an operation that I feel like it's definitely making me reflect on just health and having a kid and just in life like a bit of a wake-up call so I'm hoping I can use this moment here as a, a catalyst into a healthy life going forward to have a nice long life with my family yeah, life's too short and too precious not to take care of it and when you're young you feel invincible and this is like one of the first times where I don't really feel invincible anymore and it's a good reminder that we're only here for a short time. That was filmed a couple of weeks ago now, but unfortunately it's a long six-week recovery period, so we can't really travel at the moment. No, and that's also why we haven't been uploading for the last couple of weeks, is we've just been letting Al recover and enjoying the Christmas holidays. So in the meantime, we thought, let's do a Q&A, and you guys have sent us a bunch of awesome questions. Before we get started, I just want to say thank you to everyone who wrote in with questions, both on Instagram and Facebook. We've read through all of them, and they were great, and it was was really hard to whittle it down so we're going to get through as many as we possibly can here. Let's get stuck in with the first one. If we bought our US camper van again what would we do differently? Not burn it down to the ground. <laughs> um, I mean they probably be referring to our new camper van but yeah that was a disaster. And not spend thousands and thousands on it in the mechanics for it to then burn down to the ground. <laughs> I think we're like the definition of buy cheap, buy twice. <laughs> or buy and like four times. We did do it again. <laughs> and, <laughs> and that's what I would recommend, buying it through a reputable dealer. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> apparently that's the best way to do it. Who would have thought? <laughs> Next up, when are you doing OnlyFans? When we are not relevant anymore. <laughs> Maybe when we're a bit saggier and wrinkly. Yeah, that could be our niche. Like, I don't think we'd fit in with the attractive bods. But there is something for everyone, as I've learned. As you've learned? What does that even mean? That you're with me. God. Nice save. So the next question is, what is your main source of income? That's part one. And then we've also got, how do you travel without a good source of income? Well, so YouTube and everything under the umbrella of YouTube... That's where all of our money comes. Yeah. Like, for example, uh, for YouTube, mainly it's sponsorships and ads. So whenever you see those ads that you can skip through, that all contributes. We're very, very fortunate that this has allowed us to create a life where we can travel. But we've also done sort of everything on the spectrum before mm. YouTube took off. We used to survive off about $500 between the two of us. Uh, we lived in Southeast Asia. So the best way to travel without a good source of income is, I mean, this is an obvious answer, but it's find one, find one online. We used to teach English online um, when we lived in Bangkok. And that's a job that we could do anywhere around the world as long as we had good Wi-Fi. That was a great um, job. It would only pay $10 an hour, but when you live out in these places, that $10 goes very, very far. And also it was like super, like you could just make your own schedule online. So that would fitted our schedule really well because we always wanted to be filming. So it was really nice just to be able to hop on, make a bit of money and then go off and film for the rest of the day. When are you coming back to the States and will you be continuing your national park tour? Well, the good news is that we will be going back to the US in March. Yes. But the bad news is that we can't do the National Park Tour. Yes. For anyone watching who doesn't know, we aim to go to every national park in the US with our camper van. But since we started that challenge, they changed the rules that YouTubers can't film so, there now. Yeah, so we can go to the parks, which we still want to do, but we won't be able to film it and share it with you guys. So we'll probably just say that we did it. <laughs> I'd, I'd still like to go to the national parks. No, if it didn't, if it's not on camera, then what's the it point? It didn't happen. <laughs> okay, next question is, do we have any plans to drive our US RV up to Western Canada? Well, really want to visit Canada, and I really want yeah. to visit this year. We've never been on the channel. No. And that's a crime, <laughs> I think. The amount Definitely. of time we spend in North America. Yeah. And we've missed that big old country. Yeah. And um, we would like to take it down to Mexico as well at some point. Yeah. Um, but I think Canada would definitely come first. Oh, 
really important question. At the chippy, battered or plain sausage? I like my sausages how I like my women. Plain. Oh, <laughs> burn! Well, no, I, I actually prefer a battered sausage, but I couldn't say that that's how I like my women. <laughs> Could I? Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Moving swiftly along. <laughs> Is that offensive? <laughs> it shouldn't be because it's about sausages. <laughs> okay. What is your favourite food destination in the world? Now this is a tricky one. Because I feel like just yeah. out of the top of my head I'm three. thinking of like three or four different ones. Thailand, Italy, Mexico. Yeah. Japan. Those are exactly the ones that were in my head. Oh. You and me, we're like, you know. Mm. It's like 12 <laughs> years of spending time together as you just morph into the same person. I might as well just date myself. Oh my God. And I do when Em's not around. <laughs> No. No. Stop it. Stop it now. <laughs> <laughs> that was a funny one, though. It was good. It should go in. Would you consider living in the US permanently? Yes and no. Um, yes, I would more than happily live in the US. But no, it's just too far at this point in our lives. Yeah. I don't want to live away from family and be, you know seven hours minimum away just on a flight yeah just at this stage in our life it's just not the place for us mm -hmm. but i would absolutely love to live there i think that kind of leads on to the next question as well which is are you still thinking about living in portugal or scotland now this is part of the reason we've actually pulled back a little bit on the whole portugal thing is wanting essentially to be closer to family um mm -hmm. with noah at this young age we are very much just sort of content with not committing to anything right now in our lives yeah and just enjoying this period of having a baby for the first time instead of adding more to our plate yeah and we were also considering buying property up in scotland as we really liked the idea of just being able to jump in the van and drive and be there within a few hours. Yeah. Um, that was something that was quite appealing. And Scotland has just been such a special place for us for the last few years. It would probably be my number one choice at the moment because yeah. we can easily buy stuff as British citizens. Um, but then we went and pissed off a whole nation <laughs> and I don't feel very welcome there right now. <laughs> Exaggerating just a tad. Just a few people that didn't quite understand us. More than a few. <laughs> Maybe I should ask you some questions because it kind of feels like I'm being interviewed at the moment. <laughs> Travelling and vlogging with the baby now. Do we feel fulfilled or exhausted? Yes. Does it have, <laughs> does it have to be one of those? <laughs> it's... Fulfilled and exhausted. Yes. Yes. I'd like to say a huge thank you to Seed for being the sponsors of today's video. For the past couple of months, I have been using DS01 Daily Symbiotic from Seed. DSO1 is a broad spectrum prebiotic and probiotic formulated with over 24 clinically and scientifically studied strains for whole body benefits, including gut, skin, and heart health. The holidays are notorious for being a tricky time to stick to healthy habits. It's definitely something that Alex and I struggle with a lot. And the thing that we notice being affected most is our digestion, specifically the holiday bloat. Our gut might Microbes play a huge role in this as they help to break down food, produce key vitamins, strengthen the gut barrier, and coordinate how waste passes through our systems. Disruptions to your diet and routine can manifest in changes to your microbiomes, causing bloating as well as many other digestive issues. And by supporting our digestive health, we're actually supporting whole body health at the same time, as the gut has a huge impact on other things such as nutrient absorption, healthy skin, and even cardiovascular health. I love that DSO1 is so easy to slot into our daily lifestyle, whether we're on the road or at home, because it's just these tiny little capsules here that we need to take, which I usually do first thing in the morning on an empty stomach. If you're interested in giving DSO1 a try, we have a special offer for you guys of 25% off. So make sure to follow our link down in the description to get that discount. Well, this is a good one. Hmm. Who are your favourite travel vloggers? Ooh. We actually just watch us on repeat. 
<laughs> it's the only reason we get the numbers we do. I got like twenty different computers yeah, the same constantly IP playing, and I could just hear me going like beans out, beans out. I'm like, oh, shut up! Driving us crazy. <laughs> Actually, the truth is, we don't really watch travel bloggers. No, it's because we do it, and so it's, it's... not something that we're like seeking out to watch because most of our day is thinking about doing that. I actually have a better question for you. What? Rank the travel vloggers that we know from best to worst. Oh my, is this even a question no, or are you making up. it up? <laughs> best to worst? I don't know there has to be a worst in there. <laughs> We're not ranking anybody, that is just I cruel. wouldn't expect you to. <laughs> Let us know down in the comments what travel vloggers do you think we would get on with? Because yeah. we don't watch them, we don't know who's out there. No! This could be friends just wandering around. <laughs> Free Miss friends. Missing an Alex in their life. <laughs> Is Alex going to do any more solo trips? Mm. That's me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I looked at you for an answer. Well, is he? No, I feel like I'm being interviewed, so we're going to have to swap again. Okay. Uh, I would love to do more. The trip I did on my own... Um, it was life-changing for you. You loved it. was one of the best experiences outside the things I have to say, like the birth of my son. Oh, okay. Meeting yeah. Emma, uh -huh. you know, all those boring <laughs> ones. This... Now this was the one. <laughs> wow. uh, it really was a very eye-opening experience. Um, I didn't have phone signal for five days. Five days without technology. With potentially was grizzly bears. Just amazing. Yeah, sleeping in grizzly land, Ugh. and it was just everything was just so hard. It's amazing what you can put yourself through, and then in turn how liberating and powerful that is. Mm -hmm. And uh, I learned a lot of lessons on that trip that will. I'll take to my grave. I won't implement them or do anything, but, <laughs> but I didn't learn some lessons. Oh, this is a good question. This is a very popular question. Are you going to upgrade your UK T4 camper van? If so, what are you thinking? So if you have seen some of our previous videos that we filmed in the UK most recently, you will know that the van, we have come to the conclusion, is a tad small for us. Mm -hmm. I know, shocking. <laughs> Who would have thought? So we have been discussing upgrading it, but we're not rushing into anything. The thing is, we have two camper vans as well. Yeah. We have one in the US, so it's like, well, we just, and I could don't just go and use that it. for a bit. We do want a bigger one, but does that mean you go and buy one that's already made? Yeah. Really, really expensive. Do you go and build one? F no. <laughs> um, the good thing is that the sort of camper van bubble has burst a bit since COVID time. So I think camper van's a bit cheaper. So probably should just start looking and seeing what's out there and mm. what we can afford. And if the right thing comes up, then I'd have no hesitation buying another one. How do you handle language barriers when visiting other non-English speaking countries? The joy of speaking English is that you get to point and be loud and <laughs> someone will just wow. figure it out. We usually figure out how to say like, hello, please and thank you, and then just smile a lot. Everyone figures it out. And then there's and Google. Worst case, yeah. Google Translate, best app ever. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I definitely wouldn't let that put you off going to a non-English speaking place. Oh, definitely not. Another travel question. Do you carry much foreign cash when traveling or do you use cards? We never. Never have, have cash. cash. <laughs> it's caught us out a few times, actually. There's certain places that you wouldn't expect that really require cash. Austria. Austria, especially in the ski resorts and like the little chalets and like mountain huts and stuff. None of them take cards. So 99% of the time, you don't need it. No. Um, obviously, the sensible answer would be to always yes. carry some cash. <laughs> well, in but case, we're not sensible. But we never ever do. No. What's your best budget saving tips? For 12 years tips. of travel, you must have a few tips up your sleeve. <laughs> Give them them. Um, they want them. <laughs> Give them one. <laughs> Any. <laughs> I'm really bad at sticking to a budget. <laughs> <laughs> she is. <laughs> so I used to be a travel agent many moons ago and I learned a few tips which is kind of things that we've used to be able to travel for a long time. One is to use Skyscanner to mm. look for your flights, maybe change even where you'd be willing to fly from. So for example we flew to Thailand for a hundred and I think it was 27 pounds but we had to go to Amsterdam for it <laughs> and you can get a 10 pound bus to Amsterdam 
So we did that versus it being about three times the price in the UK at the time that we wanted to go. To book on your phone, for some reason oh, on your yeah. phone is way cheaper. So you're going to use booking.com, something mm. like that. It's way cheaper on the phone. And um, also when you're in another country and it asks if you want to pay in your currency or in the local currency, always choose the local currency yes. as the conversion is considerably better. Would you ever let Alex have a mustache? <laughs> I haven't let you. Like, yeah. I'm in charge of your face. Because <laughs> I really would like some permission. <laughs> um, I, you can do what you want, mate. It's your face. Yeah, but would you be attracted to me? Well, that should have been the question. <laughs> the answer is I don't know. So, yes, Because and I've I don't never know. seen you with a moustache and only a moustache. I mean, a moustache is quite a low-risk thing, isn't it? Because it's just like, do you like it? No. no get rid <laughs> of it. <laughs> That's it's true. Gone. Yeah. But then you might not like me with nothing as well. Yeah, I don't, so maybe that's true. I, I don't like you clean shaven. Mm. You look like a baby. <laughs> How many countries have you been to in total? And where is next on the wish list? I actually have no idea. I yeah. stopped counting, I think, in my 20s. Yeah, I think... Once well, my I've... ego was big enough, yeah. I was like, yeah, I don't need to count anymore. Unfortunately, with YouTube as well, it's like... You have to choose your destinations wisely and the content that you make and maybe some of the destinations that we would want to visit don't necessarily marry to our content. Mm. Some really high places on the bucket list are the Galapagos Islands, maybe like Easter Island, the Azores, M Madagascar. Wow, really you're going go big Basca. with these ones. Yeah, this, this is the place I'd love to visit. Yeah. I hope we can find a way that we can marry it all together because it does seem really silly. Yeah. Like, I understand it sounds stupid saying, so, oh, we can't go there when we have a travel channel and everything. But... And also, like, a lot of these places that we're listing off on our wish list are not, like, the cheapest places to get to or the easiest places or to get to. Or the easiest to travel with a baby. Yeah, so we do have to kind of choose them wisely. Like, we can't just do these, like, massive trips every month. Mm -hmm. um, but... We're hoping to be able to tick a few off this year. Where would you like to be and what would you like to do differently in 2024? Well, I mean, we've talked about this a lot, haven't we, over the last couple of weeks, especially mm -hmm. like since you've been unable to do anything. We've just had a lot of these kind of chats. And I think it's this time of year. It's a very reflective time of year. We want to really fall back in love with travel again. Mm -hmm. And that's not to say that we don't love it now. But I think we have been putting on hold so many of these places, like we've listed off these bucket list places, putting them on hold for like a later date for some reason, rather than just going and enjoying them and doing all that now. Mm -hmm. I so. think the main thing for me is to find a balance, which I think everyone's looking for a balance in their life. Nobody has balance. And <laughs> to try and find the balance between... Because this job is very all-consuming, mm. and it is wonderful, and it's it's everything that you would want it to be. I think one of the biggest things yeah. that's happened over the last number of years, especially since it's gone full-time, is that, and especially for me, is we kind of don't have any other hobbies outside of this. Well, not just like, you. We're, we're both hobbyless beings. Yeah. <laughs> As much as we love this, we need something else just yeah. for our sanity. I'm embarrassed to admit it, but sometimes I think of something that I'd like to do. And then, so if so we're in another country and I see something, oh, I'd like to do that. And then instantly I can notice my brain goes, well, that wouldn't be very interesting for video. And I'm like, yeah, that wouldn't be. So just don't do it. It's ridiculous. It's but so silly. That's just where we are. <laughs> and that's what I'd like to change. This is a good question. Something I haven't thought about at all is mm. where do you see yourself in 10 years? 10. Do you still see yourself doing YouTube in 10 years? I don't not see myself doing YouTube, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, I don't I don't see what that is going to be like, like what that looks like in terms of are we still doing it exactly in the same way or has it evolved somehow or changed? But I I enjoy it enough to, to say, yes, I could imagine doing it in 10 years' time. Mm. What about you? Don't know. 10 years is just such a long time. We haven't even been doing YouTube for 10 years. We've done it have for nearly nine. That's a so long time. So it's another time. double of that. That means we'd have done it for 20 years. That is years. a really long time. A 20 year career is a long career in an industry. I will keep doing it as long as... You don't hate it? I don't hate it. <laughs> and it doesn't come at a sacrifice of everything else. Yeah. Um, if we can find the balance, I'll do it forever. Like, I love it that much. It's just, I love it so much that I take it a bit far, <laughs> basically. Just a tad. 
there's also some other things I'd like to achieve in my life and with like consistent content you don't really get much time to do those other things. It's hard because you don't know who you're going to be in 10 years you know. Yeah. I'm such a different person to who I was 10 years ago and I don't know who I'm going to be in 10 I years time. I miss that time. girl so much. <laughs> that was the girl I fell in love with. Wow. Wow. I got left with this. Brilliant. The mother of your child. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> do we have any wedding plans? Yeah. Um, <laughs> We've been Do engaged we? for you say, uh, yeah. Yeah, we've been engaged for eight years. I mean, the plan is to get married. If that's what you mean, yes, we have that as a plan. But that's as far as the plans go. I think that's something that will happen in the next what well, eight years. <laughs> Sixteen year engagement. And then next up is why haven't you uploaded any videos recently? It's been two weeks since you last posted. Give us a break. <laughs> Give us a break. I've just had an operation, I mean, mate. Yeah. As we've reason. said in this video, Al's had an operation, it's made it very difficult to be getting out and about filming, so we haven't. Where do you live when you're not travelling? We, we live in quite an exotic place. Yeah, we live in my hometown of Western Supermare. It's a mm -hmm. seaside town in the UK. And it's where my family live and we've got a lot of family and friends close by. Yeah. Um, so we moved here, I think, one month before Noah was born. Yeah, do not recommend moving into a new place a month before pushing a baby out. No. It's not so fun. Do you ever wish that you had taken a different path in life, one that was less public, perhaps? I was about to say no, but that final sentence, one that's less mm. public. I mean, there definitely are times yeah. where I I would like that. Yeah. For sure. Um, usually when, like, a whole country hates you, um, <laughs> which has happened a few times in our career, um, for different reasons. And, uh, yeah, those times I, I don't really like it. Okay, this is another good one. Has your passion between travelling and being nomadic changed over time? Yes, mm. definitely. Yeah. Um, well, I think because everything when you first start out is super exciting. You know, like relationships, mm -hmm. <laughs> travel. It's new, it's exciting. And after time, well, it, gets, it becomes less exciting. It gets old and bitter. <laughs> and smelly. Oh, wow. <laughs> you don't have to share as much anymore. Brilliant. I think what we're finding now is that having Noah is it's kind of reinvigorated us that we get to see it again through fresh eyes. Yeah. And and see places think... differently. Because I think when you travel to somewhere in your 20s, you're looking for a different experience to when you travel somewhere in your 30s or with a kid mm -hmm. or whatever. It's different points of your life. You're going to extract different things from the same places. Maybe I... it's evolved is a good way of yeah. saying it because that's not neg it's not negative. It's yeah. not positive. It's just different. And I like different. Oh, this is another good one. Um, since traveling to amazing places is your job, what does a holiday look like? Like this. Yeah, it but looks in like... our pants, yes. usually. Yeah. yeah, we got dressed for this. <laughs> we actually did. I was in my PJs <laughs> until now, and it is yeah. 8 p.m. All it takes is for your body to kind of break down, and then you have to have an <laughs> operation, and then it forces you to stop, and now that's a holiday. Yeah. <laughs> because I can't work. Otherwise, I would be working. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Basically, a holiday is sitting still. Mm -hmm. um, whether that's at home or somewhere else. If we're in one place for long enough, we don't have the desire to film. And then the final set of questions are about the baby. Oh, in yes. some form. We thought we'd save and... the baby questions to last in case people get bored of baby stuff and they can just bugger off. It is something we've tried really hard to do <laughs> on the channel since having a baby is to not shove the baby down your throat. Yes. So I know a lot of people want to see more of the baby. But this is where we are and we're comfortable with it. Yeah. <laughs> Have you thought about having more children? <laughs> yes, yeah, we've thought about it and... I, I guess that's probably a normal thing when you have a baby is that everyone asks you, when are you having another baby? Um, the answer is we are enjoying having a baby and we're not thinking about having another one anytime soon. No. So, If we have another one, great. Probably stops there. Yeah. If we don't have another one, great. We got one. Yeah, exactly. We're <laughs> we very happy the with the current situation. We just yeah. want to enjoy it like how it is now um, without thinking too much into the future, basically. Yeah. Like, so. Most certainly not next year. Oh, no. Next year is going to be travel and enjoying our 
Our current baby. Yes, <laughs> our current baby. How's having a baby changed your adventure slash lifestyle? Mm. Are there any hacks? A new mum here. Oh, I think the. I don't know if there's a hack, but I think just to like not overthink it too much is probably a big thing because mm -hmm. I in your head everyone tells you it's going to be so hard it's going to be so different and you kind of build it up to be this big thing and it almost makes it worse mm. um the best hack i could say that we've learned is road trips as babies like to sleep in cars yes so we find it really useful to time our driving when he has his nap time so when we get to the location then we can feed him change him and then we can go off and do our activities yeah it's pretty um, great like it's it's not as easy like of course no but it is very much doable and not just doable and they're like yeah you can do it and suffer the whole time like you can still have a nice time too. yeah exactly <laughs> is noah as chill as he seems on camera no <laughs> I would say yes and no. Like, the guy you see on camera is, he's such a legend. Like, Noah is a legend. He's so great most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> but he also is not afraid to tell you if he's not happy. And basically he's quiet when we're, like, moving physically. Yeah. So if he's on your chest, if we're pushing him in a, a pram, yeah. he's... That's why he seems so chill on camera, because we're, we're usually on the move. About. He's just a wild child. He just wants to crawl around and climb on everything and like interact with you and speak with you and shout and make noises. And he's, yeah, yeah he's extremely he's spirited and amazing and so much fun. <laughs> what are your plans when Noah hits school age? Will you keep traveling and homeschool? Mm. I mean, this is a, um, a topic that we keep going back and forth to, and it's definitely one that over time we will be adding to our bucket of knowledge on the subject. So I'm not going to pretend that we have all the answers right now because we don't. I think it's just one of life's hurdles and it's something that we will figure out. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it could be anything from we'll homeschool and we'll keep traveling and we'll keep doing this to on the other side of the spectrum that we'll quit YouTube and we'll just stay here and then anywhere in between that. Yeah. Um, we'll figure it out as life unfolds for us. Yeah. There were so many other great questions that you guys sent in, so sorry if we didn't get around to doing them, but we do appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, give it a big fat thumbs up. Let us know down in the comments, where would you like to see us travel in 2024 yes, and get beyond? Get us inspired. Also, what other travel vloggers should we be friends with? Because we're lonely. <laughs> and nothing left to say, but thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time and beans, beans out. out.